who care. Good evening, I'm Mike Uche, and this is Sunday night. Mama hates crazy. She was a huge country western star singing with her daughter when Naomi Judd suddenly became ill with a potentially deadly liver disease, hepatitis C. But today, Judd is healthy. Her illness just one of many life challenges she's had to overcome. So I'm going to tell you the uh, couple of the turning points, the huge life lessons that I figured out. So how did she do it? How did she go from being a teenage mom with almost nothing to a superstar with two equally successful daughters? We'll find out when Naomi Judd joins us next on Sunday night. And welcome again to Sunday Night. I'm Mike Boucher, and our guest tonight is Naomi Judd. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. I just love the format for the show. What a concept, people actually talking. It is amazing, isn't it? We've been fortunate. I mean, people have been loyal, and they've watched. Ten years. It. Yeah, it's Hooray. good. It's a good thing. See, this is one of my mantras at home with Winona and Ashley. Uh, Winona lives on a farm on one side of me and Ashley on the other, and we have supper together at night when we're all, we have battled mm -hmm. the itineraries, but when we're home, <laughs> I can imagine. we do. And it's, uh, it's one of the reasons why we're still so intensely bonded, why we're still so uh, united as a family, is that we actually sit and we have a round table so that everyone can see each other. And when you say pass the salt or pass the mashed potatoes, you're actually passing around your family stories. Yeah, it's part of, uh, I read somewhere your motto in life was, uh, slow down, simplify, and ah. be kind to each other. Amen. That kind of goes hand in hand with it, doesn't it? I mean, where you actually take time to sit around right. and talk about what happened in your lives that day rather right. than be rushing in a million different directions? You know, when I was uh, feeding the kids on just food stamps, when I was on welfare back, I raised them by myself and had a, a pretty grim time of it for a while. Even back then, I just had such a sense that it was critically important to give them food for thought. Uh, when I was growing up, my mom lives in the house I was born and raised in, small town in Appalachia. Mama used to put uh, one of the little index cards from her recipe box on the up against the sugar bowl I can still see it and it would be word of the day and next day at supper we uh, there were four of us had to come up with using it in a sentence spell it correctly and all that so what's our word of the day gonna be I don't know you said you were talking before the show you love that you love words um, okay intimacy okay and I think intimacy is into me, you see. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. <laughs> it Did drives you? Wyatt actually crazy because like, I love words I'm always saying. Mom, stop. Community, come in unity. To, I told Ashley the other night, I said, you know, to blame is to be lame. And she goes, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you sit around and pick those up, I mean, over time, they go, Mom, you know, your love, schedule needs to be busier. <laughs> I love words because I say that uh, words are the clothes that our thoughts wear. You've put down your words in a couple of books. You wrote yep. an autobiography. You have a new book out called Naomi's Breakthrough Guide. Why did you decide to, to write? I mean, it's the love of words, but why did you decide you wanted to tell your story? Just to show how much uh, smarter people are than they think. Mm -hmm. I want to show them they're a heck of a lot, lot stronger than they're giving themselves credit for. Uh, Mike, I've learned so much the last decade. I mean, it just, it's not only saved my life. Because of the illness? I'm a medically documented yeah. miracle from hepatitis C. I was told in 1990, less than three years. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, it was one of my real life-defining moments. And I show you in the book how to figure out what your life-defining moments were, what your milestones and turning points were. But... Uh, this is one of the things that our personal ground zeros do for us. They strip us down. They make us figure out what our beliefs are, and our beliefs are based on our early memories and experiences. So I had figured out so much um, this decade of research and interviewing experts in psychology, in uh, the field of wellness, medicine, and science. I knew I had to... Uh, want to share? I wanted to tell other people yeah. because it's life-changing. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to identify you today. It was interesting. We came out here and we talked about, well, what should we put underneath her name? You know those titles we put on, on the screen? It says Naomi Judd, 
and there's nothing underneath your name because we didn't know what to call you. <laughs> I well, like we, that. Well, we thought, well, musician, yeah, you've done that. We thought about entertainer. I mean, you've acted, you've done things mm. like that, author. Uh, you say you're a communicator. Yeah. Is, is that the one you like best? And you know how I figured that out? It's those little beats in life uh, where we have present moment awareness that give us, that really give shape and I think definition to our lives. I was sitting in a doctor's office and I was just starting my voyage of self-discovery with Hep C. And it said occupation. And for a moment, I thought, okay, I've just retired from the stage with Winona because I was so critically ill. Um, and it was just one of those moments of clarity where I thought, okay, what I really am is just a communicator. I use whatever I'm going through, whatever I've learned, whatever I'm experiencing. And certainly you all have given me the mobility and the opportunity to hang out with some pretty uh, interesting brainiacs out there. So that's what I do. I'm just a storyteller. I think Ashley and Winona and are all, we're, we're all storytellers. Do you think of your life as inspirational? Some women I talk to say they find inspiration in your life story. Or do you think maybe at times it's a cautionary? tale of life. Hmm. I get that a lot. A um, guy came up to me yesterday in the drugstore and was telling me that uh, he was going through a life-threatening illness and that I, I gave him hope. He said he heard me say once that hope helps you cope and he'd never forgotten that. And that's what I call the exquisite reality when you just meet somebody at soul level. He, I don't even know his name, mm -hmm. but I felt like I really got a a snapshot of who he was. I love that. Um, but I also think that it's when we are willing to be um, just raw, when we're willing to share our vulnerabilities. Um, I feel so strongly about the truth. We just don't have a... We've lost our way in this culture spin doctors and spin control and people don't tell each other the straight. Not enough honesty. No. Today it's all eroded because uh, people aren't defined from within. They're defined by that silly superficial popular culture out there that's transient and disposable and mm -hmm. so I, I, I It doesn't mean much long term but it seems to be what dictates what we do and what we see and what we say in today's world. Not unless you're around me. Yeah well that's good to hear. Good to hear. I live <laughs> Um, in a very modest two-bedroom house with a carport. You said a carport, yeah. Yep. My car's 10 years old. I do my own housework. I cook, go to the grocery store. It's real life. It's more important than show business. Sunday Night with Mike Couché is brought to you by Columbia St. Mary's, Metro Milwaukee Chrysler dealer. The customers keep coming back. We're back on Sunday Night. We're talking with Naomi Judd tonight. Uh, we were talking... Hey, hey, hey. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Because you just Why not? <laughs> <laughs> You're the guest. Wait Jump minute, right it's in. It's the Mike show. Uh, I just want to share with your uh, with your audience something that you just told me yeah. while we were at the break. Careful. That you've been slowing down and simplifying your life. We're trying. Okay. We're trying. So how'd you do it? Well, we, we sold a house and we, yep. we downsized. And we said, you know, we're going to try and find more time to spend together and less of, of the day-to-day -day nonsense that we all go through. I think. We live in our kingdom of stuff. We do. You said we're the most gluttonous society there is. Oh, no question about it. I could spew statistics about the, the fact that we use the, the world's resources. We're just, we are gluttons. Um, you know what happened in 1990 when I was diagnosed with Hep C? I used to be head nurse in ICU and right. I got a needle stick. Uh, all of a sudden I couldn't dust or rearrange my cool stuff. <laughs> I was too sick. Um, and I thought, well, I know that illness is a very clear message that something's out of balance in your life. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me that when we're in a crisis, we have a, an opportunity to have a breakthrough or a breakdown. And that's why I called the book Naomi's Breakthrough. Well, when you stopped performing, did part of you die at that time? You talked about the prognosis for your health. But, but performing had to be so much a part of your life, and all of a sudden, you have to stop. What, what were those days like? I call it the dark night of the soul. It was hard because, uh, as you said earlier, I'm a communicator. So whether I'm writing a song uh, to express some deeply felt experience or I'm singing it with Winona, which is a whole other world, 
Um, and just the, the gestalt of traveling on a bus, all 50 states, seeing the minutia of America, being in all the little corners. Mm -hmm. I just love America and all the subcultures and a uh, very proud, patriotic woman. But there was just so much involved with that lifestyle. And then just all of a sudden, yeah. and I'm in a fe fetal position in a dark room. And it was a hard struggle because I love modern medicine. And I could look under the electron microscope at the uh, pathology report on my liver biopsy as an RN, and I knew that I was in deep water. And I had to just really practice the stuff that I uh, lay out in the book about present moment awareness. You have to stay fully in the moment. When you really live in the moment, it expands. You're not missing out on your life. You're not thinking about what I, what I have to be doing next or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Too few of us do that, though. We're, I know. We're not, we're not in the moment. We're thinking about a million different things at once. But it's possible to reclaim your life. And again, I show you step by step. I'm a very practical woman. I show you how to do that in the book. And I show you about how your mind influences your body. This is my big passion, the mind-body-spirit connection. I have the most fascinating research about how, well, for instance, the brain is an organ. It's a three-pound thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can measure it. Um, and it's a drugstore. The brain has all these pharmaceuticals in it, all these neuropeptides. And the mind, of course, is who we are. The mind is the invisible information pathway, and it's the body's control tower. It, the, the mind literally tells the body what to secrete, what to produce and what to secrete. And then you get this cascade of these feel-good chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, et cetera. You're not your typical interview. I gotta oh, tell really? you, <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, you know, I've talked to a lot of people in the entertainment business and rarely do they talk about the three pound thing that is your brain. That doesn't come up in the day to day conversation. You're not big on the country music business, as long as we're on the subject, on what it has become, are you? Nope. What has it become in your mind? Uh, phony baloney. A lot of clones out there? Oh, yes. Um, I think you just hit the nail on the head. Anytime money becomes a factor, anytime. See, there was this whole group. There was uh, George Strait, Reba McIntyre, Randy Travis, the Judds. There were all these people that couldn't not sing, and we were just eat up with it. And we all had stories. I mean, we were country songs, and we loved it. And it was a reunion, and it was just, my motto is, if it ain't fun, it ain't done. And we would have, it was, you can't even imagine what a peak experience it was. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, um, because it was that cha-ching, cha-ching, cash register started ringing because country music just yeah. and started having focus groups and marketing mm. meetings. And Welcome to television. <laughs> <laughs> it's not See, much different. I think, this is why I like your show, is that I think, and I remember when we got our TV set, I was eight years old. I remember Daddy carrying it in um, with Slick McGlone. Um, <laughs> I remember Daddy carrying it in, and I said, Daddy, what in the world is that? And he said, Honey, it's a television. I said, oh, Is it going to tell me a vision? Mm. And boy, have I been disappointed. <laughs> but television uh, has such marvelous powers to remind people that we're all interconnected, and ideas get stronger when they're shared. So to have a show that invites people to be self-reflective. See, that's one of the things going on in this culture. We have cultural ADHD, attention deficit, mm -hmm. well, hi attention hyperactive mm -hmm. uh, disorder, and it's just all just so unhealthy. We live in homes right. without walls because those advertisers are just bombarding us with messages that we're not right. We're retro. We fixing. That's how we think of ourselves here on Sunday night. We're kind of retro. We've gone back to the past. Maybe the past of the future in some cases. Who knows? Sounds good. <laughs> I don't know if it's well, true or not. <laughs> I told somebody this morning that hindsight is kind of like the future, but it doesn't have a... I mean, for, farsight. Hindsight is like farsight, but it doesn't have any future. <laughs> I like that. You see, people today don't yeah. know who they are. Do you know... You're a journalist. You're the big news guy. Do you know <laughs> the number one cause for mental illness? No, I probably dun, dun, don't. Dun, dun, yep. Dun, 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 you don't even dun. have to torture me. Just tell me. <laughs> it is. Not knowing who you are. 
People today don't, don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. They buy labels and designer goods, letting somebody else uh, project their opinion on them. And uh, in the book, I talk about how you have to be a detective in your life. It's the most fascinating thing you'll ever do. Mm. And I show you how to go back in your early childhood. Do you know how you get your personality? Uh, I, I always thought from my parents, but, you know. Well, in a way, you do. Yeah. You get your personality from your birth order. When you show up at the supper table, even as a toddler, you're sitting there in your high chair, and you sort of have to come up with these strategies and jockey for position within the hierarchy there. That's how you develop all these in little clever personality quirks. This is not just a TV show, folks. This is an educational <laughs> experience. We'll continue. Now, I, when we come back, I'm going to ask you a question you know oh, the answer please. to. I'm not going to stop. I can't guarantee that. We'll take a break and be right back. <laughs> Naomi Judd tonight. People are fascinated by this. Your life as a single mom mm -hmm. and, and leaving an abusive relationship. You talked about this in your, your first book about becoming pregnant while you were still in high school. You got married, got out of an abusive relationship, and yet you went back, studied, became a nurse, you raised daughters. I mean, how did you do that? I, I, there are a lot of women out there who say, how did she do that? I think sometimes it's hard for people to even envision because my clothes match, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but I think it's hard for, for some people to imagine um, that I was once um, so down, so yeah. scared. Filled with self-doubt. Yeah. yeah. But do you know the number one indicator for how happy we're going to be, how healthy we're going to be, and even how long we're going to live is our self-esteem. I learned that from the psychiatrist and behavioral therapist. Did you always have that, the self -esteem? I did yeah. because uh, my little red-headed mama, Polly, taught me uh, that I was a child of God and that the deepest source of my identity was that I was a child of the Most High God. And I never doubted that. I never lost sight of that. So that what that meant was that I had to step up to the plate. I had to become real proactive and I had to become co-creators with you, if you will, mm -hmm. in my life, that God had given me all these opportunities and blessings and my birthright was that I was born to win, but now it was up to me. And once that kind of, I started understanding that it's all about choices. So instead of picking guys up out of the gutter, <laughs> I realized that if I was attracting these psychopaths, it was because I had low self-esteem. I needed to really own my self-worth and then everything, every, I don't know, Mike, everything shifted from that point on. I started realizing that nobody was doing it to me. I was doing it to myself through other people. That as soon as I started feeling more worthy and valuable and attracting stuff into my life, everything just started shifting upward. And I had this awareness, and awareness is the operative word. Back one final time on Sunday night with Naomi Joe. I gotta ask you, as, as a mom, you've got a couple of daughters with very public lives. One's an actress, one's a, a very successful musical performer. Is it hard for you when Winona gets arrested for drunk driving? I know that's gotta break a mother's heart. Uh, is it especially hard for you with two daughters getting that much attention, that much media publicity? It broke my heart because she did it. And yes, that this is a girl whose core issue is feeling judged anyway. I mean, she has weight issues. She's now gone public about that. But, you know, there's, there's no excuse for it. And the weird thing is that she knows that she doesn't have an issue with alcohol. She, um, the circumstances were that it was her, one of her best girlfriend's birthday. And they had, the day before she had let her crew and everybody go to take some time off and then she was getting married in a couple of days so it was just sort of this synchronicity thing where she was and she should definitely not have gotten in that in that car to try to get herself home that night but the weird thing is uh, and this just goes to show you how in in Juddom, our lives are just so exacerbated just so um, I'm the spokesperson for mad Mothers mm -hmm. Against Drunk mm -hmm. Drivers. I know that. Mm -hmm. And the next day was the candlelight vigil in Nashville, Tennessee for Matt. I mean, what are the chances? that Actually, right. that day, 
So here I am over at Winona's house, and she is just, I mean, her eyes were almost swollen shut. She cried so hard. And we had to sit down and tell Elijah and Grace, the kids, which was the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then to see all this nonsense where they just, because we live in this um, celebrity wor worshiping culture. We don't have a royal family, so we've sort of made celebrities. I, it bothers mm -hmm. me because people know more about celebrities than they do their own family members sometimes. Yeah. And, but this focus that was never ending, you know, with the mug shots. Oh, and they, and they love the mug shots. The, the, the mug shots, I mean, whether it was Nick Nolte with his problems, I mean, just over James and Brown over again. And it's Saddam like, Hussein let's find, yeah, let's run it again and again and again. But the, the truth is, um, she asked for the maximum penalty. And this girl, by the way, does more community service in a month than most artists do in their entire lifetime. But um, it was another one of those moments at our family table where we realize that when you're a family, you stick together. We had to figure out what to do in a situation like this, where I'm on network TV mm. and I have a newscaster, a, a journalist, mm. asking me this question. We had to figure out um, if there are times where we just have to say that's off limits because maybe, but why Nona and I are just, I mean, I wear my heart on my tongue. <laughs> well, you said you're all about honesty, and, and that sort of is how you've tried to, to address it, is and, it not? And again, why Nona and I feel so strongly that we, we think other people sometimes see themselves in us, uh, and that gives us enormous responsibility. We take that very seriously. Ashley is more rigorously private than we are. I think it's because she's seen how Winona and I can just be devastated or obliterated sometimes by public scrutiny, and she just has more boundaries. Right. I mean, people know that I'm, I'm this way 24-7. If the room service guy bring, brought me my coffee this morning, he goes, hey, you, you really are like this, aren't you? I'm standing there in my flannel jammies with my little dog and my hair on a ponytail stuck up top of my head and going, hey, how, how you doing today? I'm this way all the time, and Ashley, as a movie star, they just, it's people, it's a fantasy world. People don't have that sense of respect towards her sometimes. Yeah. Well, we like you just the way you are. We appreciate you being <laughs> here with us tonight. Thanks very Can much Can I for leave you with, with a little nursery rhyme? I just sure. Well, anything, yeah. Go ahead. This, I mean, when I feel something as strongly, I have to say it. I've learned okay. this. Right. Uh, this is a, a little nursery rhyme that I tell uh, Elijah and Grace, and I used to tell Wyatt and Ashley, and this is you. Mm -hmm. A wise old owl sat in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we be like that wise old bird? <laughs> I appreciate it, except for the wise old bird. That's <laughs> very kind of you. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Mike Boucher. We'll see you again next week on Sunday night.